Welcome back to episode 4 of this Ultimate Excel Dashboard Tutorial Series. Now that we have created the basic dashboard and had a deeper look into the background, tile and slicer design, there is still one big problem left. And this problem is relevant to pivot tables and pivot charts in general, even if you don't use them in a dashboard. I am talking about what happens with pivot tables and pivot charts if we change our source data. That can either be a change of the already existing data, or adding new data to the source data table. I quickly demonstrate that by adding a new row to our source data table and entering a really high number for the revenue. That number is so high that it should dramatically increase the revenue for this specific month in the pivot table and the respective chart. If we now go to the pivot table, we see that the pivot table just doesn't care, just like the respective pivot chart in our dashboard. Both are still displaying their values based on the old state of the source data. Now to make them refresh and display the updated source data, we have to go to the upper menu into the pivot table or pivot chart tab and then manually hit that refresh button. As a side note, it doesn't really matter if we do that for the pivot table or pivot chart as both are directly connected. And now you see the values in the pivot table are updated and so are the values in the pivot chart. Now we would have to do that every single time we change something in our source data. And that makes me feel like, come on, we are living in an age in which automation is everywhere. And that is for a good reason. So I want to show you how you can easily automate that refreshing process to save you tons of time. Let's get right into it. As a quick reminder, you'll find the free basic dashboard file and many more valuable resources at excelfind.com. And the Office version used and required for this dashboard is Office 365. What we have to do for automating that pivot table and chart refreshing process is writing a small but powerful VBA script or macro, whatever notation you prefer. For everyone who has a use case for which he doesn't want to use macros because he's for example working in a corporate environment and sending around macro enabled Excel files is not allowed, you should definitely watch till the end of this video. Because there I got a good solution for you that isn't as effective but still a good workaround. So before we start scripting, let's enable this Excel file to not only execute but also save macros. So we're gonna save it as an XLSM file, which is an Excel macro enabled workbook. There we go. So now we can open up the Visual Basic Editor in the Developer tab. For everyone who is not that familiar with VBA and wonders where he has that Developer tab, no worries. You can easily make that Developer tab visible if you go to the Excel settings and in there, there should be a section for Ribbon and Toolbar settings where you just have to check the Developer tab option. Now if we open that Visual Basic Editor, we can see the whole VBA project for this workbook. And in there we have every single worksheet of this workbook listed. Now the sheet that is relevant for us is the one with the source data in it. So we double click on it to open the script editor for this particular sheet. Wonderful. We only need to code one little script, no big deal. But there are multiple versions that do the same thing in different ways. And I want to show you all of them. Okay, first we have to define a sub. That stands for subroutine and is a small program that executes the commands inside of it. Now that sub has to have the exact name that I'm typing here, which is worksheet change. And then as parameters, we need by well target as range. Then you just need to hit enter and it will automatically add the end of the subroutine. So now we can add the commands that we want to be executed. Now the name plus parameters that we just used for the subroutine are a predefined event handler. That means that subroutine will be executed every single time something in this particular worksheet with our data is changed. That is pretty awesome, right? So every time we change some existing data or add new data, that subroutine will be executed. Now there are different commands that we can use to update our pivot tables and pivot charts now. The quickest way is just to refresh all pivot tables and queries in the workbook. For that we only need one line of code in here. We reference the whole workbook with this workbook and then we write refresh all. That's already it. Let's go back to our file and check it. As you see, in our pivot table the revenue for December 19 is around 270,000 and we see the same value in the corresponding pivot chart. Then we change for example this entry here, 
Currently, that transaction is one unit of product one resulting in $499 revenue. If we change that unit number to 1 million instead, the revenue will go up tremendously for that transaction. And now when looking at the pivot table, we see the pivot table has refreshed automatically without us manually hitting that refresh button. And since the pivot chart in the dashboard is connected to that pivot table, it is also updated when we open the dashboard tab. Simply amazing. Now you might ask yourself, that sounds like a good solution. Why would I need another way to do it? Well, the command I just showed you not only updates the pivot tables, but also other constructs in your Excel file, like queries if you have some in there. So if you want to make sure that only the pivot tables and of course the corresponding pivot charts are updated, there is a cleaner, more specific version that doesn't require much effort as well and is my preferred way of doing this. I commented the first version out just to demonstrate you that alternative. So what we're going to do is we create a for loop to loop over all pivot caches belonging to our pivot tables. And then inside the loop, we just reference that pivot cache and refresh it specifically. And to complete the for loop, we need a next PC at the end. Let's just test it by reversing the changes we made for this one transaction and make it normal again. And as you see, both the pivot table and pivot chart are automatically refreshed just like before. The only difference now is, from a code and performance perspective, it is cleaner and less brute force now. With the two versions I just showed you, all the pivot charts inside the dashboard are refreshed. For demonstration purposes, we have just checked the changes in revenue which only become visible in one chart. But all the other pivot charts have also been refreshed. Now, in case you don't want to have all charts refreshed, but only one or a few specific charts, there's a simple way to do that and I'm gonna show you that one as well. What you have to do in that case is you have to reference that pivot table by the worksheet it is in. So if we take that sales line chart as an example again, we write worksheets and put the name sales line into the brackets. Then we also need the pivot table name, which is currently displayed in the upper left corner at pivot table name. And now we can reference that specific pivot cache and refresh it. Easy as that. To test this line of code as well, we make the revenue of that last transaction really big again. And you see, this specific pivot table and the pivot chart are both refreshed automatically. Wonderful. Yeah, my personal preference here is version 2. And I have one pretty helpful tip for you when you are coding such a VBA script especially if you use predefined event handler subs that are executed based on a change or something comparable. In case you wrote your code, you test it by changing something in the worksheet, but the script seems not to work. Then you need to know if the sub has actually been called, so the problem obviously is inside the sub, or if you maybe define something wrong and the sub isn't even called based on that event. An easy way to test that is by setting a marker. You can set a marker simply by clicking onto this gray area next to the line of code you are interested in. And now if we produce that event that activates the sub, in this case simply by changing a value in our data worksheet, you see, it immediately displays, OK, that sub has been called successfully with that white color. If you want to make that more applicable for everyday usage, let's assume you add 100 new data rows at once to your table and just want to get a confirmation that the script has successfully run to refresh all pivot tables and charts. Then you can easily do that by adding a message box into that sub that appears once that sub has automatically run through. So let's quickly do that. That could look like source data has changed and then in the new line all pivot tables and pivot charts are updated. Nice. Let's close the Visual Basic Editor and test it. So we change something. And there is our confirmation. Beautiful. As you see, that confirmation tells the truth because everything is updated successfully. Now, as promised at the beginning, I have one valuable tip for those who are interested in a workaround solution that updates the pivot tables and pivot charts without VBA. For that we have to go to one of the pivot tables and right click on it. And there we have to select pivot table options, which opens a pop-up window. In that pop-up window we have to go to the data tab 
and in there we can check the refresh data when opening file option. Now that will update everything automatically every time you open the file. It will not immediately update the pivot charts and tables if you do a change like the VBA scripts would do, which is still preferable, but let's assume you change something and send it to another person. Then this option makes sure that the moment the person opens the file, the pivot charts and pivot tables will be updated based on the up-to-date source data. So yeah, that's not the perfect solution, but still a good workaround that does some part of the job. And that's already it for this tutorial. I hope that video gave you some practical and useful insights. With the next episode of this Ultimate Excel Dashboard tutorial series, we will start building new custom interactive dashboard elements that are pretty nice, take that dashboard to a whole nother level and are visually beautiful at the same time. So you definitely shouldn't miss that. Again, I recommend to check out excelfind.com for awesome Excel knowledge and resources. And as always, if you liked that video, let me know in the comments and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Cheers!